The former CFO of the Trump Organization has pleaded guilty to perjury charges. Alan Weaselberg pleaded guilty on two counts of first-degree perjury Monday for lying about the seize of former President Trump's triplex apartment in testimony for his civil fraud trial. The plea does not include a cooperation agreement with prosecutors, and Weaselberg is not expected to testify in Trump's criminal hush money trial. Weaselberg was released ahead of his sentencing on April 10th. The district attorney is recommending he serve five months in jail. Into world news, we're following several developments in the Israel-Hamas war this morning. There appear to be new sticking points on a potential ceasefire deal. And over the weekend, U.S. military planes dropped the first round of emergency aid into Gaza. NBC's Raf Sanchez has more. The U.S. now stepping up demands that Israel and Hamas finally agree a ceasefire deal in Gaza. There must be an immediate ceasefire for at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. Vice President Harris delivering some of the administration's sharpest criticism of Israel yet, calling the situation in Gaza a humanitarian catastrophe. People in Gaza are starving. The conditions are inhumane. And the Israeli government must do more to significantly increase the flow of aid. No excuses. The vice president will today meet with Benny Gantz, a senior member of Israel's war cabinet. As the U.S. pushes to get a ceasefire deal in place before the Islamic holy month of Ramadan begins this weekend. Under the proposed deal, Hamas would free 40 hostages in exchange for around 400 Palestinian prisoners. But an Israeli official tells NBC Hamas has not provided a list of how many hostages are still alive, a key obstacle in the talks. The U.S. also preparing to drop more aid into Gaza after American military aircraft delivered 38,000 ready meals by parachute over the weekend. The U.N. warns half a million people are now dangerously short of food, a result of Israeli restrictions and the total collapse of law and order in northern Gaza. But for families like the Abu Anzas, whose home in Rafa was hit by an Israeli strike, they say they don't want aid from the U.S. because of its support for Israel's war. We want the United States to get away from us, she says. We don't want anything from them. 